Good morning, afternoon, and evening. All this is Yorkie with a 500 subscribers milestone video. I just wanted to say a really, really big thank you to uh, you guys, all the subscribers who have subscribed to me over the last. I think I've been doing it for about a year or so, kind of relatively seriously. Uh, I did originally intend the channel just to be uh, a place where I can showcase F1 gameplay and also maybe do the odd tutorial here or there just to help uh, a few people with their racecraft and also track knowledge. But obviously, uh, pretty much throughout the duration of me creating videos for YouTube, uh, it's kind of turned into a more serious sort of channel where I mainly do tutorials and educational videos and basically just try and help people but uh, I do also want to use it uh, basically as entertainment as well uh, with obviously sprint races and also other games uh, possibly as well basically just showcasing those uh, more light-hearted and enjoyable moments both with myself uh, playing on my own but also playing with friends as well uh, hopefully would like to do a few more of those videos in the future as well but for this video, the main bulk of it is actually going to be a look at uh, my gaming setup or my PC and kind of a, a room as a whole as well. Uh, so yeah, just before we get onto that, I just want to say once again, a really, really big thank you to you guys. Uh, honestly, it, it makes it makes doing the videos, like especially the in-depth track guys, which take a couple of days to actually do. Uh, just that much more enjoyable and that much worth it obviously I get the enjoyment out of recording the videos and then obviously editing them but getting the feedback and the constructive criticism from uh, everyone just yeah it makes it you know more enjoyable and it's kind of that cherry on top of the little cake but yeah enough of me rambling on let's move straight on to a look into my gaming setup so here we are then going into the room where basically I do everything. This is the setup that I have where I watch my films, play games, do my recording, editing, and all that sort of stuff. Quick browse around the room. So I've got the old PC down there, I've got a wardrobe over here, and a bed, and some Xbox games, some DVDs, and PC games, and other bits and bobs over there as well. I've got the mirror there. As you can see, you can see a couple of Battlefield posters. In the background there, both Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. And then, yeah, here's the setup. We have a load of other bits and bobs. Game of Thrones books down there. And Manchester United. Money box. And by the way, no, I'm not a Manchester United fan. That was just the money box that I've kept hold since I was a, a kid. And I did actually support them. Uh, a couple of go-karting trophies there. One from... Blackpool and one from the local track as well and also a bottle of scotch whiskey and then up there you should recognize this I hope this is basically the helmet that I was using in 2012 that's probably a view that you're very familiar with something like that yeah the color scheme basically uh, I bought this it's a motorbike helmet I bought this uh, Basically go go-karting with, because uh, I used to go go-karting with my mates every now and then. I got fed up of wearing the same black helmet that other people wear and catching like little colds and coughs and other things from it. So I bought my own helmet and also helped distinguish me from everyone else. And then, yeah, I have put that into F1 2012 as well. And I'm kind of hoping to get something similar for 2013 at some point, although I may do... Uh, a different helmet design, something more in line with my channel. So, move on to the important part that you guys are probably interested in. This is the actual setup that I have. This is the pimp chair, as me and my friends like to call it. Basically, it's a nice big office chair. It's about 40 quid. I've had it for a couple of years, so it's well worn now. And then, if we move that out the way, um, here we got a bottle of water, some notepads there, desk lamp. There usually is a desk fan as well for when it gets hot, but I've taken that away for now because obviously it's coming into winter. I'm not going to need it. Uh, we've got the actual PC down there. I'll run through uh, basically some of the peripherals that I have. We've got here a Razer Lycosa gaming keyboard. It's an okay keyboard. It's not absolutely fantastic. I've had many, many issues with it, so I wouldn't really recommend it. 
however, it does look nice. It's a nice shiny surface, as you can see there. Uh, although it's a fingerprint magnet, and it does also have some nice uh, blue lit backlighting keys. Over here at the mouse, I've got a Razer Diamondback mouse. It's relatively old. Uh, the Razer Death Adder series is the one that now replaces it, and I'm looking to get one of those, hopefully in the near future. Uh, just kind of saving up a little bit more money. I'm also planning on getting a new keyboard as well, relatively soon, and hopefully a new mouse mat because it's it's kind of fraying down the side here, and it's it's a little bit dirty and it's a little bit worn and used. And that is a Razer Goliath, this mouse mat. It's the smallest one that they do as well. Um, moving on to the monitors. We've got a two-screen monitor set up. This is a very old monitor uh, that I'm just using as a second screen. It's a, basically I bought a PC, a Hewlett Packard, or my dad did, on finance through work uh, quite a long time ago. Uh, I think that's before my GCSEs in college work, so that's a good seven, eight years ago now. Uh, that I had that and that was the monitor that I was using at the time. It's a 19 inch uh, the resolution is uh, 1280 by 1025 I believe and then we've got a slightly more recent up-to-date monitor which I've actually had for five years now and that is a 22 inch uh, and I'm running at a 16 by 10 aspect ratio which is probably why you get in if you full screen my videos the black bars on either side as uh, you guys are probably running a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and uh, yeah 1680 by uh, 1050 is the resolution on this so it's not full, full 1080p and I don't do 1080p videos because the amount of memory that they take up is extortionate really especially the way that I record videos as well so I have multiple audio channels for uh, both, well, enjoyment and also editing. Up here we have a little track IR monitor that, or sensor. It basically sits over on the left hand side of the screen because obviously when you're sat in front of the screen here, uh, you'll be. Uh, well, I've got this track clip pro to help show what I mean. It sits on the side of the headset here. And when you're sat here, obviously if that monitor or that sensor, is over in the center of the screen when you go to turn left the sensors that are on the front here you should be able to see three little lights there uh, they get blocked by your head so if it's over on the left hand side even doing that uh, should be able to pick up the sensors and obviously you can look left right up and down and lean left and right and all that jazz so yeah that's the track ir5 that i've been using for f1 i use it for other games as well especially armor and other things like that very nifty little piece of kit I'm very happy with it and then that's a track clip pro that uh, came with the little bundle that I got the other version or other sensor that you can have sits on top of the baseball cap on the little lid so this track clip pro is attached to Sennheiser PC360 headset very very good headset uh, I did do a review on it so if you haven't checked out that video uh, do so please do so um, what to talk about next? I suppose we should probably talk about the external hard drives that I have. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, the external hard drives that I have. I've got three. I've got this one here, which is a three terabyte Seagate external hard drive. Uh, that's where all my videos go onto. Once I've done the recording, throw all the videos up onto that, use that as storage, and... Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all that I use it for. I don't record onto that hard drive, I record onto an internal hard drive in the actual PC. But yeah, I use that one as storage. And then I got two, another two hard drives over here. I've got this one, which is a Western Digital 500 gig hard drive that's got all my films, music, and family photos and backup photos and stuff. Uh, that I have there and then this one is a one terabyte which has all my uni work and college work on it and then we've got a bundle of cds down there as well so uh if we move quickly onto the pc then this is the actual pc that i use that i built and bought for myself uh back in august for my birthday you have to excuse the terrible cable management 
Uh, the case itself is the Narrow Cool X Predator case. Very, very good case. I only have one fan on it at the moment, which is there at the front, and I've got a Corsair H100i. Uh, it's a built-in water cooler that uh, cools the CPU, and it has two fans on it that sits up the top, which come out these rather cool, funky-looking uh, fins out here. And it runs pretty cool. Just undoing the side of the case here to take it off and show you what I mean. So yeah, up there is the radiator with uh, the two fans on it. Let's see if we can, there we go. If you turn on the light, you'll be able to see that a lot, lot better. So yeah, that's the inside of the case. But yeah, the temperatures are very, very good at the moment. I'm currently, I'm at, uh, it's flickering there, as you can see on the screen and that is because I'm currently rendering a video but I haven't seen it go above 55 in games like Battlefield where it really pushes the the uh, you know the CPU to or the PC to the limit GPU or graphics card tends to go up about up to about 60 but it idles around around 30 which is a very good nice temp idle temperature so yes, going back to the inside of the case, just shooting around, getting comfortable, turn that light back on. So yeah, we've got a Corsair H100i uh, CPU cooler. The CPU itself is a Haswell i7 4770K. Uh, it's running at 3.5 gigahertz at the moment. It can uh, boost clock up to 3.9. And then if I really wanted to, I probably could overclock that even further. However, at the moment I have no need to. Uh, I've got 16 gig of RAM of Kingston HyperX Beast. Very, very nice RAM. It's very, very fast. Uh, I believe it's at 2,400 megahertz or something like that. Uh, very, very quick. And I was going to get the 32 version. However, the 32 version was more than double the 16. So I thought I'd get the 16 for now. And then when I have more money to play with, I can upgrade to that. The graphics card is a very nice EVGA GeForce. GTX 770, it's at three gigabytes, and it is the super clock version. It's a very, very nice card. Very, very happy with that. And yeah, it does wonders for games. Next up, I have a Asus Zona uh, 5.1 surround sound uh, sound card. Very, very nice card. Before I had a, a it was a Sound Blaster Extreme uh, Gaming audio card and that was pretty decent but this one is just that little bit better and coupled with the Sennheiser headphones it creates some very very nice sounds and a great frequency range and then the power supply that I'm using for this is an FXX Pro 850 watt uh, it's the 80 plus gold edition and it's a modular power supply as well so I can plug in as many uh, power cables that I want or that I need to basically help help with the cable management in this case. Cable management isn't great, you could probably tie it up here or there, but overall it's pretty decent. I'm relatively pleased with it. And the uh, the actual motherboard itself as well is a Gigabyte, I believe it's a Z87X UD3H. It's recommended uh, in the custom PC magazine for a basically a gaming build and it was recommended mainly because of its uh, overclocking uh, ability and also the uh, amount of, you know, the USB and other things and features that it has. It's very good uh, motherboard, very happy with it. It's quite a nice looking motherboard as well. Uh, yeah, the drive bay that sits at the top here uh, allows me to play Blu-rays. Uh, it's not a Blu-ray writer though, it's just a DVD RW and CD RW writer and then here we have three hard drives we have one at the bottom which is a Samsung X70 I believe basic uh, SSD it's at 250 uh, gigabyte SSD and on there I have uh, my OS operating system which is one that Windows 7 not one run, running Windows 8 had too many too many bad things about that and uh, all the important games that I like playing. So F1 is on there. Uh, we have uh, Armor, Battlefield, Daisy, 
numerous other games as well that I play an awful lot. Next hard drive up is a Seagate Barracuda at 7200 RPM. I believe that is a 500 gigabyte hard drive, which is my D hard drive, which is uh, having all the applications and other games that I don't want on the SSD. And I try and basically write all the files onto that. And then at the top here, we have another Seagate Barracuda at 7200 RPM, but this time it's a one terabyte drive. And that is the dedicated uh, recording drive. So basically, uh, DX Tori and MSI Afterburner are on that hard drive. And that is where all the game recordings and everything get written to before getting shifted onto the storage. So that is probably the biggest, the biggest tip I can give to anyone who wants to start recording videos is have your operating system and games on one hard drive and then your recording software and uh, the far, the place that you're actually recording to on another one. Ideally, if you can, it'll be great if you could have uh, four separate drives for everything, but obviously that is, you know, not every PC has, a, has the room to do that, and it can also be quite expensive to do it that way as well. So moving on to the final thing that I'll probably talk about, which uh, you guys will be very much interested in is the driving force GT wheel that I have. These are the pedals that I use. This is the basically the bog standard driving force GT. Obviously, accelerate on the right, brake on the left. The brake is ever so slightly uh, stiffer than the accelerator, just to try and give you that little bit more feedback. And I use those pedals for other games as well. I use them for armor, uh, for basically flying in helicopters and things like that. It allows you to your left and right around rather than using the keyboard. It's great, great for sensitive things like that. So very, very useful. And then, of course, this is the actual wheel. Now, the wheel itself, I basically I wanted a wheel that was of a decent size. The Xbox uh, standard wheel, which I was thinking of picking up, was actually really, really small. When I took it out of the box, it was probably only slightly bigger than the centerpiece here. And I didn't really like that. I wanted something big and meaty that I can kind of, you know, have a realistic, authentic feel and actually can stick my hands on and have to kind of move around a little bit to press the buttons. But everything on here is within reach. So there's a button there. Basically, that's the standard drone position that I hold. And then I can, you know, press that, press that. So it's not... It's a very good wheel. I'm very, very happy with it. The build quality is actually fantastic. I've had it for a year and a half now, had no issues with it whatsoever. A lot of other people who have had it longer said it's an absolutely fantastic wheel. Very, very nice feel to it. Very, very strong force feedback as well, which is also actually probably one of the down factors to it. And the fact that the, the motor for the force feedback can actually be uh, a little bit too powerful at times. Sometimes the desk actually shakes and the monitors uh, on the desk shake and my parents say they can hear it uh, downstairs through the floor um, when I'm racing so I'm kind of limited to uh, the times that I can actually you know race and use this it's usually before 10 p.m. I think is when the family starts going to bed so yeah uh, otherwise cannot recommend this wheel enough it's about 80 quid from Argos when I bought it I think it's around a similar price at the moment as well from other retailers and yeah it's basically i would say the perfect uh kind of starter wheel if you're looking for a like a g25 or a g27 later on down the line but you don't quite have the money to get that then this right here is uh probably your first call to basically go so i'll run you through the buttons and things uh basically the setup that I use uh, when racing. Obviously, we've got a D-pad over here on the left-hand side, which works in exactly the same way as your D-pad does on your controller. So, obviously, you've got your engine mapping at the top there, brake bias, and then tire options over to your left. Uh, these buttons around the middle here, the plus and minus here, also this, and the little wheel that spins around here, and also this PS button in the middle. Don't do anything on F1. However, I'll use those two for headlights and windscreen wipers. Uh, in project cars and I don't use those for anything else obviously you've got a start and select down the bottom there 
this wheel does use uh, both or works sorry with both PS3 and also PC over on the left hand side no right hand side sorry we got square that does nothing X is my look behind circle is my car status and then triangle is my change view these two buttons before I had track IR were look to the left and look to the right uh, they were pretty useful for basically yeah looking around the car and trying to see those other cars around you then up the top here we got two two buttons on the left and right left we got curves and on the right we got uh, DRS basically as just driving along you just press and hold that for your curves and it works rather nicely especially as on the back here we have they're not really flappy pedals they're more like flappy buttons or levers on the back here's one on either side of the wheel this one is obviously change up and then I got on the back here is change down so uh, that works rather nicely and I use those for project cars and then if I'm using the flappy paddles as uh, the gears in project cars I'll use this little stick shifter here pulling it uh, towards you as a handbrake use that also for dirt as well however sometimes I do use this uh, for changing gears obviously pulling towards you shift up pushing away shifting down and then I'll use the flappy pedal over here on the left as the handbrake so there is a couple of points in one or two of uh, my project cars videos where I'm actually driving one-handed through corners I'm kind of shifting up and down whilst obviously also steering but yeah that is I guess that's a look at the setup that I have um, if you have any questions about it feel free to ask actually I'll show you real quick uh, the settings that I have for my Logitech profiler and actually I'll do that as a, a screen cap rather than showing you through the mobile but yes that is the room with the mirror there which I've been trying to avoid constantly I'm not, I'm not doing a face reveal just yet maybe at a thousand subscribers I may do it then so th again thank you very much for obviously getting me to 500 subscribers absolutely fantastic uh, I cannot thank you guys enough because obviously you guys make my hobby that much more enjoyable so yeah uh, let's take a look at that Logitech profiler so yeah those are the profile settings that I use for the Logitech uh, driving force GT will this is obviously for PC not for PS3 as the PS3 version doesn't have these uh, doesn't have this profile or, or allow you to adjust these settings but feel free to copy those and just try them out for yourself in the actual game itself your steering linearity and also sen sensitivity should be set to 0% and then uh, I use a 1% steering dead zone and this works perfectly fine for me I've had no issues with it and it's the settings that I also use for 2012 as well so yeah just pause the video copy those try them out for yourself and then let me know if they work for you but yes just one big final thank you guys for getting me to 500 subscribers honestly I, I'm struggling to find words to really you know uh, show my appreciation but of course I do appreciate, appreciate it greatly so yeah thank you very much guys if you haven't already subscribed, um, please do. Uh, obviously, aiming to bring more videos in the future. I shall hopefully see you soon, guys. But yeah, take care.